Okay. So, hi, this is Elizabeth Claire Brewington with Brightside Global Trade TV, our podcast. And we have a celebrity author because he's written more than one book, maybe 20 books about different people's lives that have inspired him enough to write a book about them. Uh, and we've done quite a few books on the show. But today he's back from Italy and I want to hear about it. And I don't know if you've written any Italian books, but I want to hear all about it or anything that you want to share with us on the channel. Well, so you over to, to you, Where'd you Anthony. go in Italy? Uh, where'd you go in Italy, Anthony? I'm sorry? Where'd you go in Italy? Um, I was in a support role of my uh, partner. My wife was running a program with American students in Italy. Okay. So, uh, and also, uh, by the way, I'm always delighted to be on with you two, you know, Elizabeth and and I really what, what happened was I was listening and my computer got cut off. I mean, I mean, it, I, it took me an hour to get back on, but I want because I wanted to say it was I was really delighted in hearing and listening to the women or the women that you had on. And I, I, I would love to give some of my time and I'll tell you briefly about Italy to um, Janice to hear a few minutes of her great grandfather's text about the Cherokee. I really would love to hear that. Anyway, but I'll, I'll take a minute. I, I, I just want to take a minute and I'll talk about my books. I have made a career out of staking out Italian, Italy and Italian, how could I say, themes from an Italian American's point of view. Because when I was coming up and I made, I mean, I've been writing and editing since the 1960s. Because when I was coming up, the texts that we really had were Mario Puzo's, Gay Talese, who became a good colleague and friend, who was doing something else from the, for the New York Times. So I was fortunate to be educated in a, you know, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a rich way and decided to become a cultural worker and introduce Italians to different ideas. So that's what I did. Uh, and so I have 12 books, many of whom, many of which I've done with Elizabeth recently though, not about Italians, but one about an Hungarian, a Hungarian doctor and a Jewish, a Jewish writer, Shel Silverstein, who I worked with, the children's book writer. So uh, I made a career out of staking out a territory that I felt that my culture in this country was in need of, frankly, then I did. I mean, here are some, I'm going to put, here's, some, here's my first book, The Mediterranean Rust of Brooklyn. They're all on Amazon, all over the place. Um, the American uh, uh, Mediterranean Rust of Brooklyn, Valentino and the Great Italian, uh, John Dante's Inferno, a playboy's wife. John Dante was an Italian immigrant. He, he was second in command to Hugh Hefner. This is a love story between an Italian American and a, a famous black woman, Tony K. Bambara's One Sicilian Night. And so that's the story. I mean, that, that's what I did. And so I'm open always to any feedback about the books, about the process. I was also a professional editor. So I, anyway, so that's, that's, my, that's my, um, my work and my life. Uh, now in these last years and and through the pandemic has has really it really affected me in a way where i really wanted to help people you know as much as i could and i was restricted so um that's 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 uh, about what i want to say so janice can you can, sorry to take can you read like a minute or two minutes of that of that text Sure, I'd be happy to, if that's okay with everybody yes. else, I feel like I'm... Is that okay? Is that okay? Yes, Claire, yes. is that okay? Yeah, Anthony is yielding his time to you, so yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, all right. The English of you, Anthony. So this time frame that this little section is, is about is pre-Trail of Tears, um, but it is during a time when there are a masses of small groups that are fighting the Cherokees. 
So this also relates some historical documentation that my great grandfather found. Um, and so it's also a read from a memoir, which is not very pretty. So this section, this chapter, I called a backwoodsman named Russ. It is not nice to recall, but it is naked truth that our backwoodsmen, regarding the Indians as mere heathen and cumbers of the earth, displayed the same ferocity in fighting them as is shown by the worst of men gone wild with fanaticism. They slew without regard for age or sex. They scalped the victims and collected bounties for those scalps from their own governments. They did not consign captives to death by torture after the Indian fashion, but they coolly, coolly murdered the feeble and carried away the strong to be sold into a lifelong of slavery. In Colonel William Christian's army of Virginians was a man named Rust who left a journal of their expedition against the Cherokee towns in Western Carolina. In describing a personal encounter during one of the battles, this is what he said. A stout Indian engaged a sturdy young white man who was a good bruiser and expert at gouging. After breaking their guns on each other, they laid hold of one another. When the cracker had his thumbs instantly in the fellow's eyes, who roared and cried cannily or enough in English, damn you, says the white man, you can never have enough while you are alive. He then threw the Cherokee down, set his foot upon his head and scalped him alive, then took up one of the broken guns and knocked his brains out. Then Russ goes on to say, it would have been fun if the white man had let the latter action alone, let the Cherokee have his brains, but send him home without his nightcap to tell his countrymen how he had been treated. That this savage white man should do such a thing to a Cherokee Indian is not so strange, but that a fairly educated man of some standing should be capable of such comment is hideously illuminating to those who seek true pictures of 18th century border life. Some of the Cherokees continued to fight the colonies until the close of the revolution, but the main body succumbed after the first disaster and surrendered to the adjoining states a great part of their territory. Wow. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're watching Brightside Global Trade, and she's actually going to be on Monday. And that's a great idea, Anthony, because we should get a, we're doing Juneteenth, and we should get you to do a book reading. You read beautifully. Uh, yeah, and I'll you. send you a link to the Audible so she can, you can listen to it. Okay. Yeah, beautiful voice. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you, Anthony. I appreciate thank the you. shout out. Thank you.